My name is Chris Miller, and the purpose of this heuristic evaluation is to recommend possible information architecture improvements to the CU Health Sciences Library's website organization and labeling. My goals for this evaluation are to give good recommendations for improvement, show examples with other websites and wireframes, and create better user experiences. I would like to thank Alex Martinez for his guidance in the information architecture class at the University of Denver and my group members Debbie Quakenbush and Julia Havlick, and our contact at CU, Vivian Houghton. The main users are students, on-site and distance learners, faculty, MDs and PhDs, staff, clinicians, and researchers, which include pre-doctoral and post-doctoral. For user concerns, although we weren't able to do usability studies, we were able to gather emails, chats, and calls to the library, as well as um, snack chats, we were able to go to one. And what snack chats were is they were held by CU and they conducted interviews with the library staff and they asked about possible improvements to the site, as well as frequently asked questions to the library staff. Business goals for the website. Um, web website improvements should reduce the total number of emails and chats leading to follow-up consultations by 20%. Number of consultations should remain the same or increase because users will be able to intuitively navigate the website to schedule a consultation with a librarian. Providing excellent usability should cut down on librarian work hours spent answering online chat, emails, and phone calls regarding unsuccessful searches or the inability to locate resources or accomplish tasks within the website by 20%. There were several, uh, several homepage issues that we found and we were able to make recommendations for. Uh, such as hours, search bar size, find it in Google Scholar on the, on the main search in the middle, uh, who are you, that treats uh, content divided up by users, the dynamic content, we found um, something we'd like to make a recommendation on, and the drop down menus and sidebar links could be reordered, and I'll go through that one by one. Some of the other issues were the Ask Us page, the consultation page, broken links, and its lack of bootstrapability. And I'll look at those one by one as well. So here we are on the Health Sciences Library webpage as it is now. And one of the first things I wanted to show you was the library hours as it currently is. Up here they have today's hours, whether it's open or not, which is a good feature. Um, but they also have this large chunk right here, which shows them uh, so it shows the hours every single day of the week, next week, and they have detailed hours, which takes us to another page. Um, and I didn't, we didn't think that this huge block, which stays with us on every page, was necessary. If you look at other medical library websites, what they'll do is instead of having this large chunk here, they'll take this detailed hours and they'll put it up here next to this. And so if we go to our wireframe, um, we decided to put that in here. We took out the big chunk, we put in something else that they requested in that space instead, and we just took today's hours, uh, 8 to 5, and we put in the detailed hours instead. Now they can keep that open or closed there if they want to keep that in there too, um, but the detailed hours takes them into that page, which I'll have to this week and next week, and takes out that big chunk of space which doesn't have to stick around on every page. The next thing was the search bar at the top of the screen. It's kind of an odd size. It's tall, but it's not very long. So when you're typing something in, you may not be able to see what you started typing at the beginning by the time you're at the end. Um, on other sites, typically the search bars are longer. Um, and since there's a lot of room available here, we went ahead and made that search bar longer. Find it here in the middle, it doesn't actually say where you're finding things. So we thought it would be a simple fix to add the words in the library catalog. So you see here it says find it in the library catalog. Also scholar here at the top in this tab doesn't say what that function is. It's actually Google Scholar. So we just added the word Google there to tell you what that tab is. 
and that function becomes much clearer. Another thing that was added as a suggestion through the Smack Chats is to divide the content up by user groups. So if you're a student, it says, who are you? Um, if you're a student, you click on student, and then um, all the content is broken up for students. And this is something that actually hasn't had any usability studies done on it, so we're not sure if this is going to make things easier or more difficult. And in our readings, it was actually suggested that this might make things more difficult. So this is something we're a little tentative on. Um, they might want to do some usability studies before they actually implement this. And it was actually suggested that performance issues may be um, caused by it. So it's something that we're putting in there because the, the client wants it, um, but we're, we're a little tentative on that, a little hesitant. Another thing that you'll see that we put in because the client's already doing it is on the side here, you'll see that these have changed. They're no longer showing the full box. We're just seeing the, the titles and these are called accordion links. When the, the user clicks on it, it'll pop open um, with the full list of links. So if we go next, you'll see that it pops open and it has all of these links. Um, another thing is we're adding in this, how do I? Um, one of the things that, that users came up with over and over again was they were having troubles finding things like articles, journals, books, ebooks. Um, so we added this in and it would have tutorials, links to tutorials. Um, so we have that in here as well. And also uh, FAQs were in here because if they had anything else that they didn't know how to do, they could quickly click on this FAQs and pull that up as well. Another thing I wanted to mention is there's a particular picture in the dynamic content that I seem to come across more often than any other. This one's actually pretty good. It's talking about free classes out of the library, which is really neat. Um, but the one that I keep running across is one that tells patrons to be quiet on the second floor. And I can show it to you really quickly here. There it is. And I understand that this might be important to the library, but I'm not sure that the website is the right venue to get this information across. It may actually come across as a little offensive, although I think they're trying to be funny here. But there are so many other great things about the library that you could actually be advertising instead, like the free classes at the library. Um, oh, here it is. <laughs> it actually came up for me when I refreshed it. So it comes up quite a lot, but it can actually tell people um, at the library themselves uh, at the library itself, that they need them to be quiet. They don't actually need to, to waste that valuable space, I think, um, on the dynamic content. Another thing that we thought was a little confusing was the way the drop down menus were ordered. Um, it came across in the emails, the chats, and the calls to the library, as well as in the snack chats. So we reordered, and in some of the cases, we renamed the drop down menus. Um, so if we go to here, we'll see that some of these have asterisks after them, and those are the ones that we renamed to make them a little less confusing. And also, over here, these side menus have been re, uh, reordered according to Google Analytics, and not all of the analytics, um, not all the links had analytics attached to them because the outbound links were unavailable. So these we viewed on other medical library sites on their top links, and we made judgments accordingly um, to what was popular on other medical sites. Another issue was the Ask Us page. I'll click on that. Um, it's hard to get to the consultation page. Well, it's not really hard to get, but it's below the fold. It's kind of hard to see. It's just one, uh, one little word down there, kind of small. So people start off with emails and they can get chats, but it's, it's kind of hard to get to. And then when you click on it, to consult a library, make an appointment, so you have to click again. There's just several clicks to get to where you need to go. We thought that it would be easier 
Well, first of all, consult a librarian was just right there at the top. You just clicked there and there's the form. And it's right there at the top with the chat and the email right before you don't have to, to worry about it being a one little thing at the bottom there. It's actually right at the top. We also thought that all the consultation services, all the different kinds, were all on one page. So that, and the form is at the bottom. So that you don't have all this confusion about who do I need to talk to? You know, who do I call? What type of person is my issue going to? You have a little paragraph under each different type describing exactly what it is that you need, and then the form is underneath. And then each one has a phone number so that you can always call if you're still confused. Another problem was broken links. There were several broken links um, on the website. And when a user is redirected to this page because of a broken link, ask a librarian and contact the library web, is, uh, web administrator links do not function. And the website loops the user back to an oops, requested page not found URL. So this definitely needs to be fixed. One of the major other things is that when you make this window smaller, it doesn't bootstrap down. You just lose the content completely. It doesn't really, it doesn't really work at all. And it, it's not a good site for any other kind of device, like a phone or a tablet. So that's something that they'll want to look at too. For the first part of the competitive analysis, we looked at the Stanford uh, Lane Medical Library. And one of the first things that we liked were the library hours there at the top. These hours 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. And instead of detailed hours, they just have an hours uh, link where you can click on it and then just look at their detailed hours. So everything you need to know is right there. And you don't have to have a big clunky sidebar that follows you around. Pretty much that. There's an auto suggest search box. So if you need diabetes, you don't have to type the whole thing in. And it has all kinds of diabetes information for you available. Um, their journals page is great. As opposed to what we had here for the databases. Um, for the databases here, we didn't really like this because you've got numbers after everything, which um, doesn't really mean anything to a user. Um, great, we've got 16A journals, but why does a user really need to know that? Um, also, when you're looking at the subjects or the by titles, you've got academic one, academic search, access, but then you go to subjects, you've got the same thing. This doesn't really seem to be very much different. And you've got show all, and now you've got subjects in show all as well. So the only real difference here is when you click on subject, now you've got subjects in this drop down, which you may not have even noticed because it's so similar looking. When you go to Stanford, they actually have these little boxes with the A, B, C, D, and you've got core titles by subject, and then you can go to the catalog from here as well, which we thought was really great. That was just really well, really well put together. Then if you go by subject, now you've got you've got the A's as well. You've got it broken up into these subjects, which is just really neat. And because the alphabet's not very long, your subjects are not going to go on forever, so you don't even really need to search that way. It's just really well done. You've also got this beginner's guide to the website here in the middle. And instead of calling these specialty portals um, libguides, which makes no sense to anybody, specialty portals 
kind of puts in the language you're going to understand it. We've also got a how to here, which is kind of like our how do I that we like. It gives kind of a tutorial section to new users. So this is kind of why we liked the learning site. Um, the next one on our competitive analysis was the Yale Medical Library, the Harvey Cushion John Hay Whitney Medical Library. And the reason we like this one, again, the, the hours were listed at the top, the daily hours. Um, a lot of the things that you needed were listed at the bottom. So anything that you needed to find was listed there. The home, find, portal, services, and about were clearly listed. Anything that you needed to find, was listed or fine pretty much. Your FAQs, your journals, books, databases were all listed there pretty clearly. Um, your LibGuides were found pretty clearly, but they were listed in their guides and tutorials, which made a lot more sense than LibGuides for the most part, and they were listed in a pretty clear and easy manner. Finding articles. Finding books, managing citations, they were listed in a pretty clear and easy language. Anytime that you went anywhere, you were given breadcrumbs. So here, for example, with Home Services CRS, you can always find your way back. Here we have the journals and books. They're done by title and subject. There's not a lot of drop-down menus to flip through. You're not going through large lists and searching for things. You're just clicking and you're done. You'll also notice that on most pages we have these Ask a Librarian icons with chat, call, and email. Pretty intuitive. You just click on it and it'll let you know if the librarian is unavailable so you can fill out a form. It also gives you the phone number for the circulation desk, info desk, and what the hours are again. And the consultation web page is great because it provide photo, provides photos of each librarian. It gives con contact information, what their areas of expertise are, and it also gives you a, a link to their web page if you have one. So that's pretty informative. I also like that they use their space well. Um, they talk about getting to the library, what's new. They also have their guides and tutorials again in the middle. Um, their space is talking about what's what's useful in their library. So I like that a lot about this one. So what is the value of good IA for the CU Medical Campus? By changing the website, the library can be the central hub for the library users' information needs. Changing the, the website will encourage social engagement with library users and the Anschutz Medical Campus. Changing the website will reduce the amount of time librarians spend answering needless questions. And what is the risk of not changing? Continued library user dissatisfaction with not finding information on the Health Sciences Library website. Continued high costs of educating users on how to use the HSL website. Unorganized and unstructured addition of new website content will continue to contribute to factors one and two. Dissatisfaction and high costs will cause a failure to gain trust and confidence from the target audience, library users, and business partners. So that's what I have for you. Thank you for watching.